morning. Today is February 14th and we're gonna be putting sand bedding in the stalls this morning. The first couple of groups are in the parlor right now being milked. I'm gonna do our usual thing, scrape these alleys clean with the skid steer, and then we're gonna grab the bucket attachment for that bobcat and throw sand in the freeze stalls. We're milking about 360 cows right now, which is a record high for us. Our cows are producing about 33 liters per day, which is really good for us. And our butter fat is at 4.5%. Uh, we did, however, just pull out our bypass fat, the palm fat, which will boost your butter fat. And before we pulled it out, we had two bulk tanks between December 1st and now that cleared 5%, which is incredibly high for a Holstein milking herd. This cow's another one of those cows that stands a bit awkward in the parlor. But if she's producing uh, almost 32 liters, you always deal with it. Milking. Uh, I do still have to clean the parlor, but I'm gonna go eat breakfast first. It's a good stuff, man. It's peasant food, but I love it. Yeah, all right, time to wash the parlor down. We're using a new fire hose this morning, the old rubber one, blue, and we had to replace it. We had this spare sitting there for probably six months. It's a new type of hose. It's one of those mesh fabric hoses, although I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of it. It is a lot lighter, and that's supposed to be the upside of this fire hose, which really pays dividends when you're pulling 75 feet of hose, but it's not as flexible. It kind of tenses up once it comes under pressure. And the other major downside to this new hose is it is more than twice as expensive as your regular rubber hosing. So we'll see how long it lasts and um, we'll make a decision when we want to replace this one or when it blows, whether or not we're going back to the old rubber. We're all done in the milk and parlor for the morning. It's all clean. Now me and dad are vaccinating the milk herd. We're doing this to prevent mastitis from occurring in our milking herd, as well as respiratory diseases. So that's uh, lung problems for the cows. And these are two vaccines that you gotta give to the cows before they are pregnant or before they're about to get bred. So we're aiming for cows that are, I believe, between 20 and 60 days in milk. So we got a total of 50 cows to do this morning. Got our list right here, two vaccines. Dad just had to leave for a second. But uh, otherwise it'll be me and him going at this. This afternoon we're gonna be fixing up corrals. There's a few rough cut two by sixes that have broken down and on our new wall too, the one I just finished. But cows, once they get one of those boards broken, they start to scratch their neck, their head, and there's rubbing on it constantly. And they start to break the next one, the next one, the next one. It's just a domino effect. So you gotta be on it quick and get those things fixed up. Otherwise they're just gonna continue to break every single one. So that's what we're doing this afternoon. few good handfuls of nails. 
In pen five, that's where we're gonna start. It's uh, no coincidence. All the corrals that have broken boards are on the east side of our feedlot, and that is because all the younger animals are on the west side of the feedlot. So, makes sense, bigger animals are always rougher on stuff. We got three boards to replace in this corral anyway. Get them hammered on. Well, this is Corral 7 and we just finished rebuilding this wall uh, about a month ago. All new boards hammered on, but uh, three boards are broken right there. There's another one over there. So we got four to replace on this new wall. And I think Dad said he might have backed into this with the hay buster. He doesn't know for sure though, but uh, that's most likely what happened because these new boards are always the hardest to break. But uh, once the first one goes, like I said, they stick their head through here all day long. You can see this just gets worn to the point where it's almost round just because they're uh, rubbing against it all day long but we're not going to be digging down into here it's probably a foot deep those boards and that uh, we're just going to put some boards across temporary till this summer when i come here with the wheel loader scoop it away nicely and then we can put up some new boards Brought my mom some uh, special paper nota from Holland. What do you think? It's really nice. I never thought there were so many different kinds. I didn't think so either. Was that a special store? Yep. That's cool. Wow. Normally there, well, there's not any normal paper notes here, but these ones. Aren't those a different thing? Uh, these are kruidnootjes. Kruidnootjes? Yeah, kruidnootjes. And these are pepernoten, peppernuts. Cool. Here. Nice. We're just putting bedding in the corrals and we got another load of hemp bales. Uh, we tried using some of these for bedding before. It went pretty good. And this is another load. These bales are, I believe, three years old. And the guy that sold them to us said they were really hard packed and tough to shred. So. This is the first couple of bales that's going to go through the shedder. We're going to go check it out. The reason why we're trying to use hemp straw as bedding in the corrals is because hemp is a crop that's growing in popularity around here anyway. And uh, they can't really chop the straw out of the combine because it is so tough. It just takes so much power and it slows combining down so much. So everyone that's growing hemp is pretty much just dropping it and baling it. And it's just a byproduct. It's uh, kind of a, a annoyance for most guys that are growing that stuff. So. They bale it just to get it off of their field, and uh, it is an opportunity for a cheap bedding source. It's definitely making that tractor work. There's actually a ton of straw per bale too, it looks like. Just one bale for this whole corral, and it makes a nice nice bed pack. It's for sure gonna work as a good bedding material. Apparently it's not gonna break down as much in the straw pack though, so when we spread it over the field in the spring, we're still gonna be dealing with that stuff. We're gonna have to see what that looks like. We'll uh, cross that bridge when we get to it. The other thing I'd like to mention is, I don't think I've ever heard that bale shredder uh, sound as bad as putting that last bale through. So it is definitely hard stuff to put through that hay buster. But uh, if it's half the price of regular straw, there's an opportunity there to make a little bit of money maybe. And that will then pay for the extra wear and tear on that hay buster. Well, you made a bloody mess, Dad. No, it looks like it's just twiny, eh? Yeah, it just sticks to everything. Pretty crazy. He didn't have his flapper down because otherwise he's gonna hit those posts. Just kind of flies up everywhere. And it's just like a bunch of small strings, so it catches on every little sliver on the wood. Huh. 
Well, that is going to be it for today's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram, at SassDutchKid, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.